Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We always say for children, but these are the most exciting stories for each and every person, regardless of our age. And this is exciting because it is about a little boy from Jerusalem. And Nathan lived in America at first when this story first started with his parents and his grandfather had come to see him. And he told him that when he was time to have his bar mitzvah, that he would be sure that he would be allowed to go to Jerusalem. But he didn't realize that his, the, after his grandmother and grandfather went back to Israel, that he was going to school. And these children invited him to go to a happy day club. But he wouldn't go in because he didn't know what to he, he was going to be taught. But he stayed outside and he listened. And after his grandfather left, well, he knew what his grandfather thought about anyone teaching anything from the New Testament. So he taught, when his grandfather left, he said, uh, you know that the Messiah is going to come back to Jerusalem, to Israel. And he said, oh, yes, and I heard he's already been on the earth. He's already come. Oh, he said, don't you listen to those foolish things. So he was so excited about learning, he went back again. And this teacher, he didn't remember where the place was, so he kept going and going back and back and going right around and around to try to find this house. And he finally found it. And she taught him the Word of God, the New Testament. She told him she was a Jew, and he couldn't even believe this. How could a Jew be a Christian? He thought all Gentiles were Christians. So she had to tell him everything and keep him straight on this. And he was taught by his grandfather to think, think. And he was even rude to his teacher one day, and he walked out on her, and his parents had taught him that he's never to be rude to anyone. Always te treat adults with such authority. They are in authority over you, and you are to treat them with great respect and honor. So he had to go back, and she taught him the Word of God. She taught him about the Trinity, and that Jesus Christ came as a Savior. She had this all prepared. He came as a Savior. He came as a little baby to go to the cross to die. And she had this set up so he could see this, and that he did come, and then he went back to heaven, and then he's coming again. And he could not believe this wonderful truth that she had told. And then the day that he had, was going to leave, that's when he told her that he was going to Jerusalem to live because that's what his father decided to do. And then they got to go, got to fly on a plane and go, and they went to Mia Shirem. And the people there were Orthodox Jews. Now, the many things that we learn in this lesson they are difficult for some people to understand. But you know, God loves us all the same. There is no respecter of persons with Christ. There can be no respecter of persons with us. So when he got there, they went, he, he saw the star of David and he had learned that when you lay that star of David on this trinity that that's how you get the star of David because we have a body and a soul but we don't have a spirit until we are born again so this is God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and we must be born again by the Spirit of God, or we are not complete. So he learned this, and he was so excited because he had learned something new that he had never heard before. And then 
he met this little boy. Oh, how exciting this was. He met a little Arab boy. Now, you know, you cannot hate another person. If you do, God's word says you are a murderer. So this little boy told him about Jesus also, about Christ. And he tried to tell him how he must accept Jesus Christ. He said, I have so many questions. He said, don't ask questions, just believe. And he told him about how the Israelites had, his sister had gone to the hospital in Bethlehem. And she had heard about Jesus Christ. They taught everybody. And they will accept everyone in this hospital because this was made by, built by true believers. There are missionaries there. And they treated her so good that she realized that they have a true God, a true and living God someone that loves them with an everlasting love. And what happened is he told him, just like his name was Ali, he said, there are gods for the Jews, there's, gods for the, there's a God for the Jews, there's a God for the Muslims, and there is a God for Christians. And then he learned himself, Ali did, that there was only one true God, and when he learned this, he told him about John 17, 3. Now, I have been studying, and this is my goal, to memorize all of John 17, the great prayer that Christ prayed for us before he went to the cross. And the first thing that you must learn in this, John 17, 3, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And he calls him Father. He calls him Father. And through this, you study this, memorize all that Christ prayed for us before he went to the cross. It will change your life. And if you don't have assurance of salvation, here's what he says in verse 12. He was said that we may be one as they are one. Remember the Trinity is one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They can't be separated. They are equally in unity. This is how the body of believers ought to live. This is what the Spirit of God unites and never divides. And he had learned about the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And then he says in verse 12, While I was with them, those that thou hast given to me in the world, that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. We have assurance of salvation here. This is what he desires for all of us. And then you're listening to me today. And Christ knew before he came to this world, before the world was, he said, he prays for those of you today. Neither pray I for these alone, but for those also which shall believe on me through the word today. He was praying for you before he went to the cross that you would receive this gift of eternal life. And Ollie and him became friends the very first time they met, even before they found the apartment that his mother and father moved in later. And he told this little Jewish boy, and that helped him to know that this teacher that had taught him in Chicago before he left, that everything she said was according to what this little Arab boy told him. You see, if you love somebody, you will tell them that God loves them and sent his son to die for them. Let's pray. Oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, 
we are asking for every true believer today to pray for those that are lost, to give out this wonderful good news, the gospel is good news, to someone that they know that has never heard these truths. And help us to see every person in the perfect love that thou hast given to us, this divine love, that we will love one another as thou hast loved us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. So we thank thee for hearing and answering their prayers. We thank thee today that it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. And may every person that's listening, this is our desire. Everybody that's in this body of believers are one. Unity. There can be no division. That we will desire to teach every person to know Christ and to manifest Him in every day of our lives. To be able to make known Christ in this world. And we thank thee for the blood that cleanses us from all sin. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So when we come to this lesson, we know that he had his bar mitzvah. And we know that the Jewish people taught the Old Testament to their children. They were commanded to. So are we. And at his bar mitzvah, he turned to Isaiah, Isaiah 56, 3. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the rabbi that was there, he said, you have been listening to the Gentiles. That is not from our Old Testament. And he said, yes, this is from our Old Testament. And he became angry. He became angry. The rabbi did. And he left. And listen what he says. We have not a real Jew here who has become a man today because that's what they believe, that you became a man. And when you had your bar mitzvah at 13 years old, and he angrily left out. And his grandfather said, why did he leave? My grandson only asked questions. But then his grandson, he said when he left, he said, I'm sorry the rabbi left. But he said, I want you friends, you are my friends. I want you to know that when Isaiah spoke of this prophet, now, you have to understand this to know what happened, that this was Jesus Christ. He came to this earth to die. He suffered, and it says he's going to suffer. It tells right here. He is despised and rejected. In Isaiah 53, 3, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He was smitten of God and afflicted. He, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. In verse 10, he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And then in verse 7, he was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. You see, when we are afflicted, we are to do the same thing. We are to do the same thing. He said, I believe that this, he did come. And he walked in this land of Israel. And he died on the cross for our sins. And he wants everyone to trust him. And I have trusted him as my Savior. And there were groanings through the, uh, the people. And he said, please, just listen to me. I want you 
to study Isaiah the prophet and learn that he spoke of the Messiah. In Isaiah 53, the word he is in there 27 times. And this boy was thinking, he said, I believe, just like you, that the Messiah will come and reign on this earth and he's coming to this land again. But he came the first time to go to the cross and die for our sins. And I want you to know that he is coming again, just like you're looking for the Messiah to come. And then he's going to be our king. But now he's our savior. He's my savior. And he walked out and he said, thank you for coming to my bar mitzvah. Thank you for your gifts. And thank you for your love. I love all of you. Now, this was a 13-year-old boy, and all of his Jewish friends were there, and Ollie, his friend, was there. And he walked out. As he walked out, his friend Ollie walked with him. They didn't speak for a while, but he had one friend that was truly, truly his friend. You see, you can never hate another person. So the people told his mother and father, that they had a wise son, a good student, and that someday he may be a rabbi. But grandfather and his grandmother and his mother and father, he could not look at them. But he knew when he said these words that he was truly a child of God. He was not ashamed. And he had, was a brave 13-year-old to tell all of those people about his salvation. Now, this is what every one of us are to do. So then, when he went out with his friend, he came back home. When he came back home, his grandfather was sick. This was his, his house. His grandfather was there. And when he saw, how in the, looked in the room where his grandfather was, he said, went back, his grandmother frowned at him and told him, motioned for him to go out of his grandfather's bedroom where he was. And his father came out and touched him. And he said, your, grandf is, your grandfather is very sick. He said, is, is, is he going to die? He said, no, the ambulance is coming and they're going to take him to the hospital. So here's what his grandfather said. This is so amazing. You know how he loved his grandfather, how his grandfather loved him. And he said, you are not my grandson. This broke his heart. This broke his heart. He could not believe that his grandfather said, I don't know you. And he thought his mother and father would do the same thing. But he said to his grandfather, as they were taking him out, Grandfather, I am your Kaddish, your, your Kaddish, and I will pray for you. This is one thing I can do. And his grandfather, this is a saddest story. He turned his head away and wouldn't talk to him anymore as he was leaving. And he said, Grandfather, Grandfather, his mother gave him an angry look, but he knew he could pray. As he was sitting in the living room after he left all alone, his grandfather went to the hospital. His mother and dad stayed there with him, and he just knew they were going to disown him. But you know what? They didn't. They didn't disown him. After a while, after he quit crying, his father looked at him and he said, Nathan, I want you to know you are still our son and I am proud of you. And this surprised him so much, he wept even more. And his father waited till he had calmed down from his tears and he said, I do not mean that I approve of what you 
believe about the man that the Gentiles have taught you. You were brave and let everyone know how much courage you had and how I respect you for what you did. You were very brave. This, he kept telling him how brave he was. He said, I cannot deny that you gave us all something to think about. But your grandfather and your mother, they have felt different. But if you wish to stay with us in our home, we want you to stay because you, you know that this is your home as long as you live. Now go to bed and go to sleep. Oh, he was the happiest boy in the world. He said, I've got the best parents in the world that they would not disown me like grandfather did. You see, this is not real love. This is not real love when you can turn someone away of your family members that loves you and you only have this nature, this love that is not God's perfect love. So after this, grandfather got all right and it was time for him to go to school. So he, it was so excited for him to go to school. He got to go to school a half a day to the public school and then he got to go a half a day to the religious school and they taught about Jesus and the history of Christianity. Oh, the growth in Christianity that he could learn. And oh, he had such a desire to learn. And he would be in school a half a day with Ollie. And then with their textbook, it didn't tell them all he wanted to know about Jesus Christ. Ollie had a New Testament and he started, Nathan started saving his money, his allowance, and he went to the Arab bookstore and bought him a New Testament. He started reading it, and oh, how excited he was, and he didn't try to hide it from his dad. And one day he thought, I think my father's been reading that New Testament. And then him and Ollie would go and study the Word of God. They would go and study this book together. That's the kind of friends you're to have. And they wanted to learn about Christ and the place where he came to and walked on the same land that they were walking on. And then after this, after he had started reading his Bible, his grandfather wouldn't come to his house and he wouldn't let Nathan come to his house. And one day they, they got a call that he was very, very sick. And his father said, you can't go to their apartment. But he said, please let me go. Please let me go. He said, you know what the neighbors will do. They know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. And they won't even speak the name Jesus. But they will stone you. And he said, that's all right. I will. I will go. Sure enough. When he went, the neighbors saw him coming in and they were stomp throwing stones at him. Now see, this is not real love. You can not hate another person and treat them bad because we're to love our enemies. But he went right on in anyway and some of the stones hit them, all three. Then when he got in, this is the most amazing story and you'll have to hear the rest of this next week. When he went in, he saw his grandfather. And this is a, one of the sad stories that all of us can listen to. I want you to hear this. And I want your minds to think of how awful this is for a grandparent. He walked in and he said, please, grandfather, forgive me. He said, well, if you are sorry that you became a Christian, I'll forgive you. He said, no, grandfather. I am sorry because I hurt you, but the Messiah loves you. It's like the prophet Isaiah wrote about. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the sins of us all. Grandfather, my sin and your sin, and he loves you. Grandfather, he loves you, and we know that he is God's anointed one because he arose from the dead. Oh, he said, Grandfather, please. 
please accept this gift and forgiveness of sin. His father, his grandfather of all things in the world, spat on the ground, on the floor, and he said, this is what I think of your Christ. And he turned his head to the wall and died. I can't even imagine what that is like. I cannot in my finite mind. I want every person that's listening, if you are a Jew, if you are a Gentile, God loves us all the same. He died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That you will never die. That you will never die. And the next day was going to be the day of Passover. Next week we're going to learn what the Passover is about. And we're going to learn what happens to this little boy that was so brave and had such courage to speak the word. And I want you that's listening today to get in this book and study it. Study the book of John that we're going to study next week and just start out it reading the book of John. If you're a Jew, go buy you a New Testament. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And then we go to John 17 once again. And before he came to this earth, this is the most amazing thing. He said, Father, glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. And he said, O oh, Father, Glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Oh, study this book. Just read it and study it. Everybody has to know the Word of God, but you must believe it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for losing. So be a missionary. God's own emissary. Be a missionary.